All right, YouTube. Uh, so as you guys have seen, I've been doing a lot of work recently on weathering cars and track and just been getting into that whole side of the hobby and I'm pretty excited about it. Um, you know, I don't really do anything different than probably what most people do as far as weathering their rail cars goes, but I combine probably four or five different methods of what I've seen people do on YouTube, basically, which is where I learned how to do it. Um, so I'm going to show you a quick video of the stuff I use and just basically the techniques that I use um, to weather a rail car here. So we're going to weather this out there and ready to roll a WP 50 foot box. So basically the stuff in front of you is the materials that I use when I weather a car. Um, I use the AIM products, weathering powders. They come in, the ones I got come in little four packs. You see they come in small jars but they last a long time and they come in a variety of different colors so I've bought two different four packs come with a bunch of rust colors and things of that nature. I also start the first thing I use is polyscale acrylic wash. Um, it's actually something that a friend gave me that ends up working real well and uh, I'm gonna actually end up probably having to make some wash because that polyscale is hard to find now. I also use these Woodland Scenics uh, track painters. Um, this is steel rail. It actually looks really good as an under coat for the uh, trucks and then I use a you know every, you can use a paint pen you can use anything you want um, but this one is actually nice it's a more expensive paint pen that I got at Hobby Lobby and it has a very thin tip so you can paint the wheels without taking them out of the trucks which I really like um, I also use about three or four different paint brushes um, I use a broad one a you know a big one a middle one and a narrow one and I also have a bigger one also and then uh, basically the tactics that I use to uh, prep the model is with a paper towel. I saw that on a video on YouTube and it actually works really well. You put the paper towel on the car and it uh, fades it, the uh, pit, uh, fingerprints and all that stuff off of it. And then I use a, a piece of scratch paper to recycle the powders. So we'll get started here and I'll show you kind of step by step. What I All right, so like I said, the first step that I usually do, and, and I've already done some of them with this car already, is I take a paper towel and I fold it into a square and then I take the rail car and pretty much just, just wipe it down. You don't have to put very much force on it. Just wipe it down and it'll get rid of any of your fingerprints. With the four more finely detailed cars, you need to be kind of careful because you don't want handrails and things coming off. This car has a decent amount of detail, but it's not enough to mess it up too bad. And it really actually does take a pretty thin layer of the clear coat off. As you can see, there's actually a little bit of brown on there. It's kind of hard to see. The next step that I do is I uh, use the uh, brown paint pen here, and I uh, paint the trucks or paint the wheels. So as you can see, it's hard to see because I got such terrible lighting, but I painted them. They came out a really nice dull brown. And the next thing that I'll do is I'll uh, take this rusty rail paint pen, since I didn't like the way it looked on my track, and I'll uh, paint the trucks. Don't need to be graceful or anything like that. You just Paint it on there. And this will be good when you're weathering your car because the uh, weathering powders will stick to the paint. So there's that. And again, the lighting is really bad. I'm sorry, but I'll take some pictures of it when it's done. So the next thing that I do um, that I've already, that I've skipped as well is I'll uh, wash the roof. Um, what I use is this poly scale. I don't know what the mixture of water to acrylic paint is, but it's really easy to make um, if you run out of this stuff or can't find it. And basically, I just shake it up real good, get a paintbrush, and start on the roof. And just I do a big bead down the middle, and then I just wipe from one side to the other, and it creates a real nice um, effect on the roof. I don't have a Car that doesn't have a weathered roof on it right now but I'll show you a comparison sometime but it really does come out well and if you have a blow dryer it can dry real fast I don't have a blow dryer out here so that's usually what I'll do the first step is I'll uh, paint the wheels and the trucks 
and then um, do the roof and then I'll let it sit for a little while and uh, and then I'll start so after the next step here we'll start weathering the roof a little bit using the powders so before we get started I just wanted to show you the difference on the roof I forgot I had two of these cars so here's the roof on the one that I did and then here's the roof on a brand new one same car different road number and then also you can already see the difference in the trucks even though the lighting is so bad the, these trucks are very dull and more realistic looking as opposed to the shiny ones so um, there's a good difference in the right there and if you don't want to weather your cars a lot really all you need to do is wash the roof and that'll that'll and paint the wheels and trucks and you can be done right there I, there's several cars that that's all I've done and maybe put a little line of dirt down on the bottom but uh, you know there's there's no rule to how weathered your car is in fact I don't really like weathered cars but uh, I've just kinda gotten the itch right now to do it so we'll uh, we'll do it so here we go with the powders so on this car here we're gonna do uh, I'm gonna kinda go all out on it um, I'm gonna do a three stage kinda rusted roof um, with layers of rust because you know cars don't all rust the same time so I have a an old rust, a middle, um, kind of middle rust, and then a new rust. So what I'll do, and it's uh, real easy, is um, I'll take the uh, old rust first, and I'll kind of just do a bead down the middle here. And then I'll uh, do a bead down not every one if you don't want but a couple of the main cross uh, supports here for the roof okay so now we've got a nice base for the rust you know I, I think in theory and there's no prototypical rusting but these are the probably the areas that I would imagine would have rusted first so it would have been the oldest part so now what I'll do is I'll uh, take the uh, medium rust and just see the grooves, especially in this roof, there's a lot of little grooves and stuff. I'll just put a little bit in a few places and just swipe it real softly and just fill in some of the lower areas with just a little bit newer rust. So now as you see I have a, kind of a two-part rust. There's a darker rust along the top lines and a uh, kind of a lighter middle rust in the grooves. So now as you can imagine we'll put the lightest rust on the top and then kind of blend it all together. So basically what I do is I take the lightest rust and just put a very fine dab of it on the uh, high areas of the model. And I just Just rub on the high points there. If you put the brush to the side, it'll hit the high points, obviously, before the low points. So it makes for a nice kind of uneven distribution of the powder. All right, so now I've pretty much uh, put the three stages of rust on. As you can see, it's it's looks pretty good, I think. I mean, is it accurate? Who knows? I don't spend a lot of time looking at the roofs of rail cars. And to be honest, I don't think anybody does. But in this hobby, you know, you do, unless you have a pretty high layout. So that's a point that I, you know, when I was thinking about what was really important to me to weather, the roofs is, the roof is a, an important one to me. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean up this rust, uh, pour it back in so I can save it. I usually just pour it in the dark one because it blends better. And then we'll put a little bit of uh, dark earth and black on there and really bring the whole thing together. Okay, so it's... As uh, luck would have it, I was doing some work earlier in the day and I kind of made a little mixture of my own based on just letting all the colors fall in together. So that's what we'll use. I can't, this is a mixture of just about every powder I have. So we'll just do the same thing, except for we really won't uh, pick a place. We'll just put it on there and and let it all blend together. Generally the spots that I 
am looking for when I do this stage is the parts that didn't really get any rust. So there's pretty much exposed metal and I'll uh, focus in on those areas there. So now we got the roof pretty much the way I like it. Um, like I said, this is a pretty heavily weathered roof. A lot of my cars aren't this weathered, but as you can see, we've got a nice blend of the rusts. You can still kind of make out the difference in the uh, colors of rust, and then this kind of brown mixture just really ties it all together. Um, at this point, what I generally do is I'll clear coat the roof, and then I'll get the I'll clear the whole car so that way um, the uh, next round of weather and I have a little bit of tackiness to the uh, side of the car from the um, clear coat and it'll uh, keep it uh, keep the bomb the powders the side of the car better so uh, also what I usually do at this point especially when I just blend all the powders is I'll I'll paint the trucks at this point because I like the uh, blend that I have right now I'm just gonna use it so again really no rhyme or reason I just put it on there enough to be able to see it obviously And just cover the whole thing. It doesn't matter if it gets on the wheels, it'll the car will still roll. That was one of the things that scared me is oh no, you know. It's gonna screw up the inside of the wheels. Well it doesn't get in there, and if it does, it just comes out. If you really want to be fancy, you can take your wheels off and oil the inside and blah 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 blah, but whatever. So do the other side here. Again, no, uh, no rhyme or reason. Just get it on there. That's one thing about weathering that I that I realized is you know there's a lot of people who count rivets on your models and make sure that you've done everything right. But can't anybody tell you that a car is weathered wrong? I mean, unless you weather it with ketchup and mustard or something. But as long as you're using the right materials, it, I don't think anybody has room to say anything. So anyway, here we are at this point. Um, we're all done. I'm going to clear coat the car, and then we'll do part two, and we'll weather the sides of the car. So we'll talk to you soon.